Good morning. Welcome to Online Church. And once again, it's such a privilege to be in your home this Sunday morning. We are really here at your service. You know, in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 24, it says, Then King David said to Ornan, No, but I will surely pay for it the full price, for I will not take what is yours to give to the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings with that which has cost me nothing. You see, David knew the importance and value of worship. Regardless of his situation, he always took time to talk to God. In times of joy, he praised God. In times of sin, he cried out to God. In times of loneliness, he turned his heart towards God. And regardless of his emotional condition, whether good or bad, David made time to worship his Father. And that's why today corporate praise is so important and powerful because it helps us redirect our focus onto Jesus. Because without Him, we're insufficient and incomplete. But with Him, we're up to any task or any situation that we face. So this morning, let's give ourselves to praise and worship. Let's enter into His presence and let's celebrate the goodness of God. Enjoy the service.
Lochani, Molweni, Sawabona, Tubela, Khuyamora, Dumela, Avudi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a privilege to be with you this morning. And if you're going to be sowing your finances, you can give via SnapScan, which is on your screen right now. Or you can do it through EFT by simply going to our website, rfcfc.com. You can find our bank details there. And we want to thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness during this time of COVID-19. Because of you, we've been able to continue to establish our vision and grow in the mission that God's given us as a local church. We are so blessed this morning to have Evangelist Thurston and his wife Abigail with us in the service, and he's going to bring you a great word today, and so I encourage you to open your heart, take out your Bible and your pen, and remember that this will be uploaded to our website, and it will be on demand after the premiere this morning. God bless you, and enjoy the word of God. Well, good morning to Rama South Coast, and good morning to our online community. I want to take this time to thank and honor Pastor Larry and Pastor Mandy Elliott for the opportunity to minister at your Sunday morning services. And so it's a privilege and honor for me to be here this morning and to minister God's word to you, beloved people. But before I minister God's word, let us just come before the Lord and pray. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, that you'll anoint speaker and hearer alike. I pray that my tongue will be like a pen of a skillful poet, speaking the articles of God and proclaiming the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray for receptive hearts this morning. I pray, Lord, that your word will permeate the hearts of your people, liberate them, set them free indeed, activate them, ignite an urgency in their hearts, and save them by grace through faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm excited to be here this morning on the south coast of South Africa, ministering God's Word. And I've entitled my sermon this morning, Registered in Heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody shouts out this, shout out this morning, Registered in Heaven. And my foundational text this morning is found in the book of Luke chapter 10, from verse 17 to 20, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Luke chapter 10, from verse 17 and 20, and I think it's appearing on the screens right now, in the New Living Translation, and it says this, when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, talking about Jesus, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name, yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall, Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a powerful portion of scripture. And so when I read this portion of scripture, I just thought to myself, imagine the sound of 72 excited adult men. Because when I read the scripture, the Bible says when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to Jesus that demons obey them when they hear the name of Jesus. So I can just but imagine Jesus was positioned at one place and he must have heard such a sound, come on, approaching him. 72 excited adult men on their way now, joyfully on their way, excited to share the testimony with Jesus, to tell Jesus that, Lord, even demons obey us when we mention your name. And yet they approach Jesus thinking that Jesus is going to be excited like they were and receive their testimony well. 
But when they shared this with Jesus, Jesus responded like this. He said, yes. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Hey, hey, hey. What Jesus was saying to them, guys, come on. You are getting excited because demons obey you when you mention my name. But the head of the demons, Satan himself, I, Jesus, saw him fall from heaven like lightning. What Jesus was saying to them, even me witnessing Satan fall from heaven like lightning did not warrant rejoicing. Come on, come on. But then Jesus said to them, guys, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Don't rejoice about things that are temporal. Rejoice about things that are eternal. Come on, somebody. I want to encourage someone today. Don't rejoice about the things that are temporal. Rejoice, beloved, because your names are registered in heaven. Rejoice, beloved, because you have been saved by grace through faith. Rejoice, beloved, because you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Rejoice, beloved, because you have been justified. Come on, just as if you have never sinned. Rejoice, beloved, because you and I will spend eternity with Jesus. And Jesus said this to his disciples. Don't rejoice. Come on. About these things that are here today and gone tomorrow. Rejoice. Because you, my disciples, your names have been registered in heaven. And my desire this morning as I deliver God's word is that today people's names will be registered in heaven. My desire as a minister of the gospel of Christ this morning is that today after I preach the sermon that somebody will surrender their lives to Jesus. That somebody will call upon the name of Jesus. That somebody will be saved by grace through faith. Maybe you're here at Rama South Coast this morning or maybe you are connected online. But my desire whether you're in the house this morning or in your own house this morning. And my desire is that somebody will be saved by grace through faith and that somebody's name will be registered in heaven. You might say, but Brother Thurston, how does one get registered in heaven? Well, that's a very good question. The only way your name can be registered in heaven is through salvation. And that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Let us look at what the Bible says about salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. In the NIV Bible. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Let me say this to you this morning. When I preach about heaven. When I preach about salvation. Something happens inside of me. Because salvation is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know beloved. If I fall down right now and die. And Pastor Larry gets up and Pastor Larry prays for me and I'm raised from the dead. Let me say this to you. That is not the greatest miracle. That is but just another miracle. But the greatest miracle, hallelujah, is that someone is saved. Come on, somebody. By grace through faith, salvation is the greatest miracle. And let us see what the Bible says about salvation. The book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says this. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. Salvation is found in no one else but Jesus. And it's only through Jesus. It's only through accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. That your name can be registered in heaven. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 11 verse 25 and 6. Jesus says uh, to her. And I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. Though he may die he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The question today is to you beloved family at Rama South Coast. To you beloved online community. Do you believe this? I love that portion of scripture. It says here, in, the, in verse 26, 
He says, whoever lives and believes. I love that. That's key right there. Jesus says, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. That's key, beloved. Jesus says, whoever is alive in this earthen vessel or her earthen vessel, whoever has breath in their lungs, come on. Whoever is alive in this life, come on, and believes, hey, in Jesus, come on, will never die. I want to submit to you this morning. It's not about people. He doesn't say whoever lives and does good works will never die. He says whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I want to submit to you this morning that the only criteria to go to heaven, the only way that your name will be registered in heaven is to believe in Jesus Christ. Believe He is the Son of God. Believe He is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Surrender your life to Jesus and your life will never be the same again. So if you're sitting under the sound of my voice this morning, within this church or online, come on, somebody, and you have yes to hear. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying that if you believe in Jesus this morning, if you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you will be saved. Hallelujah. And you will Will never die. And my desire this morning is that everyone in this world will be saved. Come on. And that no one will experience uh, 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 eternal damnation or spiritual death. But that all mankind, uh, all of God's creation will come uh, to salvation and receive this glorious miracle. The greatest miracle of all. And that is salvation. Someone shout hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Jesus did not say Whoever lives and does good works will never die. He says, whoever, meaning anyone in this world, lives and believes. The key is believes. Come on. In me. Hey, Jesus says, in me will never die. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what Acts chapter 16 verse 31 says in the NIV. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 in the NIV. It says this. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Hallelujah. You and your household. You and, come on, your household. Someone say, you and your household. Listen. My mother, a testimony of myself. My mother prayed for 20 years for me. 20 years, my life was wayward. I lived a riotous life for 20 years of my life. I was a wicked man. I was a chief sinner. Chief sinner number one. I was wayward. I found myself in a very dark place. But listen to God. That's why the scripture says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Hallelujah. My mother prayed and prayed for me. But my mother and myself, my brothers and my family, we were not saved. We were churchgoers. But we did not come to the salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ. We did not accept Jesus our Lord and Savior. But my life was wayward. 20 years in a very dark place. Involved in the underworld for 20 years. And the latter part of that 20 years, 8 years of that 20 years, I was addicted to drugs. I was bound. Bound, bound. Family said my life will never come right. My community said my life will never come right. But here my mother, a simple church-going lady that was not saved yet by grace through faith, prayed to God to touch my life. My mother prayed and called upon the name of Jesus to save and touch my life. Not to save and touch her life. And guess what God did? God saved my soul. Hey. On the 8th of July, 2007. I was at Rayma North in Randburg. I went into that church on the 18th of February, 2007. For the first time. And I attended church every Sunday without fail. I went in and out, in and out, in and out. But thank God for Pastor Ray. 
that was and still is relentless with his altar calls for salvation. Hallelujah. A man that understands that salvation is the greatest miracle. Every service he done an altar call for salvation. From February the 18th of February, Sunday 18th, I resisted that call. February, March, April, May, June, July. Almost for five months, I resisted the call. But on the 8th of July, hey, the Lord answered my mother's prayer. And I found myself on the 8th of July at an 8 a.m. service at Raymond North in Randburg. Going to the altar and I gave my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus that day saved my soul. He saved my soul. He saved a chief sinner. Hallelujah. That is the day my name was registered in heaven. Glory be to God. That is the day God wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. That is the day I was saved by grace through faith. Redeemed and justified. Set free indeed. And that is the day God saved me. And so here, I exited the church, being saved, coming to my mother, come on, listen, sharing the news of my salvation to my very mother that was praying to God to save me. But at that point in time, my very mom, the mother that gave birth to me, the mother that I love so dearly, come on, at that point in time, my mother did not yet give her life to Jesus, my God. My mother prayed to Jesus to save me. But at that point in time, come on, Jesus answered my mother's prayer, saved the son, but my mother was not saved yet. My God, listen, listen, I see it this way. God answered uh, a mother that was still a sinner, unrighteous, come on, prayer to save a very sinful son. Uh, and God saved me, but my mother was not saved yet. Hey. <laughs> so my name was registered in heaven before my, my mother, but it was my mother that was praying for 20 years for God to touch my life. My God, you got to give a hand clap to Jesus right there. Hallelujah. Come on, is there anyone excited here this morning that God answers the prayers of a mother? Maybe you are sitting here this morning, or maybe you connected via online, and you've been praying for your sons, you've been praying for your daughter. I want to encourage you this morning. Don't give up, mama. Don't don't give up, Daddy. Keep on down on your knees. Keep praying to Jesus and watch what the Lord will do for you. Come on. If God could do it for me, then God can do it for your son, for your daughter. If God could do it for my mother, then God can certainly do it for you, Mommy, for you, Daddy. But listen now. The story becomes, come on, hey, more colorful and exciting. So here I am, saved by grace through faith. On the 8th of July, 2007. And here's my mama. My very mother. Come on. That's not saved yet. Come on. But she's happy that God saved me. And so here now, the prayer changes. Hey. So here now you find a righteous son. Hey. A righteous son praying and calling upon the name of Jesus to touch my mother. And for three years, I prayed for my mother, salvation. 2007, I got saved on the 8th of July. 2008, God spoke to me to go to Bible school at Rayma Bible School. I ran from God for one year. 2009, I surrendered. Rested with Rayma for full-time Bible school. That time, it was three years. I signed up. And when I came to my second year, they said, no, two years is all that uh, they're offering now. So on the, in 2010, it was a Friday night at my final night of graduation of Bible school. Yeah, I had my cloak on, my sash on. Come on, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. At Bible school, my final, my final, my final year of graduation. My mother was there, close friends of mine and family was there to witness the special occasion that the grace of God brought me to. Come on. And here, Pastor Ray preaches and does an altar call. And here I'm sitting with my peers of Bible school. And when I look into the crowd, come on, I see this lady walking to the altar. When I look to the left, look to the right, come on somebody. The only thing I saw was goodness and mercy. And when I look, I said, that's my mother. My mother now, come on, three years after my salvation, my mother walks to the altar. 
and she surrenders her life to Jesus. And on my final night of graduation, it was about the 27th of November, 2010, my mother gives and surrenders her life to Jesus. My mother is then saved by grace through faith. Come on, somebody. Because the word of God is true. He said, believe in the Lord and you will be saved, you and your household. And three years after my salvation, my mother is saved by grace through faith. My mother's name is registered in heaven. Hallelujah. So in the natural, beloved, listen, my mother is older than me. Come on. My mother turned 75 now on the 26th of February, and I'll be 49 on the 30th of November. So there's quite a gap in the natural. Listen, naturally, my mother's older than me. But spiritually, come on. I'm three years older than my mother. Hallelujah. Because my name was registered in heaven before my mother. Someone shout, hallelujah. And that must excite mothers right there. Glory be to God. Imagine, mother, a mother prayed for 20 years. And her son gets saved before she gets saved. Come on. But indeed, the scripture of God is here and amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus. And you will be saved, you and your household. Someone say amen. Listen, you see motivation, inspiration, and education without salvation is the highest form of condemnation. Let me explain to you. Motivation is important in this life. Inspiration is important in this life. Education is vital and very important in this life. But guess what? All three can only serve you in this life. So you've got to add to the equation of life. You've got to add salvation to the equation of life. And then you have a powerful combination. Hallelujah. Why only receive the things that can serve you in this temporal life? You've got to receive what can serve you in eternity. And that is salvation. Hallelujah. And it is through salvation that your name can and will be registered in heaven. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So guess what, beloved? I celebrate two birthdays every year. I celebrate my natural birthday on the 30th of November. I was born 1972. And then I, I celebrate my spiritual birthday on the 8th of July, 2007. So every year, Pastor Larry, Pastor Mandy, I celebrate two birthdays. You know why? Because I love gifts. So my wife organizes, bakes a cake twice a, week, a year. Come on. And twice a year, they sing happy birthday. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Because my new birth is my true birth and it's my spiritual birthday. Come on, somebody. That got my name registered in heaven. It was my spiritual birthday that redeemed me from my natural birthday. Come on, somebody. So every year, I celebrate two birthdays. And my desire this morning at Rayma South Coast is that everyone present here at the church and everyone connected via online is that everyone under the sound of my voice here this morning, your names must be registered in heaven. I want to say to a mother today, you've been praying for your son. You've been praying for your daughter. Maybe your son is not bound to drugs. Maybe your son is not involved in the underworld. Maybe your daughter, come on, is in the wrong relationship. Maybe your son is saying, there's no God. I don't believe because of tragedies you have experienced. But I want to say to a mother and a father this morning, don't give up praying. Come on, keep pressing, keep praying, keep pushing, keep believing. Come on, it took 20 years uh, for the Lord uh, to answer my mother's prayer. Come on, but the Lord did answer my mother's prayer because the Bible says his hand is not shortened that he cannot save and his ear is not deafened that he did not hear. It took 20 years uh, for God to answer my mother's prayer, but it only took three years for God to answer my prayer concerning and regarding my mother. And guess what? When my mother gave her life to Jesus, my three other brothers also gave their lives to Jesus. The grandchildren gave their lives to Jesus. And guess what? God is not done with my family. God is not done with your family. God is not done with this world. Come on, somebody. Keep praying. Keep believing. And watch the Lord save your family, save your community, and save the world for the glory of God. Someone shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Isn't this good news? Beloved, listen to what Acts chapter 2 verse 21 says. Acts chapter 2 verse 21 says, and every, in the NIV, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Listen, my mother that prayed for me when I was a hardened criminal, a wicked man, a chief sinner, a man bound by drugs and bound by the things of the world. She prayed for me. God saved me. My mother is not only saved now. My mother travels with me also. Come on. And my wife. Come on, somebody. All around doing crusades. Come on. My mother testifies on the streets about the goodness of God. So look what the Lord done for my family. And what he has done for us, he can surely do for you. So the Lord did not only save us. We are not just normal Christians sitting at home. My mother supports and is involved in ministry. My younger brother is also involved in ministry. Come on, somebody. And that is what the Lord will do for you. Come on, somebody. Is there anyone here this morning that says, Thurston, we believe that our family's names will be registered in heaven. Is there anyone here this morning? Shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 in the NIV. The Lord is not slow in keeping his pray, promise, as one under, some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Glory be to God. Everyone to come to repentance. I think my wife was saved at the age of 13 years old. My God, I didn't even think about salvation at that time. 13 years old, my wife was saved. Come on. I only got saved at 35 but guess what? The Lord still, come on, completes what he begins in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody. If you believe that this morning, shout hallelujah. Psalm 62 verse 7 in the New King James Version, David says, In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Come on, give a hand clap to Jesus. Some mothers here at Rayma South Coast and online, I believe this is witnessing to your spirit. There is nothing too hard for God, mommy. There is nothing too hard for God. And what seems impossible to you this morning is possible with God. And I know the last year has been very difficult. There are some people that have allowed unbelief to creep into their hearts because of this pandemic and because of this difficulty. Not only the church is facing, but the world at large. But I want to say to you this morning, Salvation still comes through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't give up on your son. Don't give up on your daughter. Don't give up on your family member. Don't give up on your friend. Don't give up on your peer, young boy, young girl. Don't give up on your colleagues. Hallelujah. Because God is about to touch their lives and God is about to save them. Come on, somebody. You see, family members gave up on me. My community gave up on me. Come on. They said my life will never come right. They said I'm going to die at an early age or spend the rest of my life in prison. Come on, somebody. You see, but when people operate like that and speak like that, what I try to do is, is cheapen the grace of God. But what people did not know, that grace was about to snatch me out of the clutches of Satan. I want to say to you this morning, the person that you want to give up and write off might be a mighty woman of God, a mighty man of God. Don't give up on people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep pushing. Come on. Keep looking to Jesus for their salvation. And maybe a church this morning and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But you have a desire this morning because of the word of God. And there's a tugging at your heart. Come on. And you say, but brother Thurston, two things I would love this morning. I would love my name to be raised in heaven. And I would also like to celebrate two birthdays. Well, beloved brother, beloved sister, come on. Come on. There's all my there's always room for one more. Come on. And if that is you this morning, come on. Don't res resist. Make haste and come to the Lord. Surrender your life to Jesus. Because salvation is and will ever be the greatest miracle. And Jesus was the answer to the world. Jesus is the answer to the world. And Jesus will be forever the answer to the world. Someone shout amen. John chapter 3 verse 16 in the Passion Translation. I know the scripture, we all know it, but, and 17, but when I read it out of the Passion Translation, I thought, wow. It says, for here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its savior and rescue it. Hallelujah. 
And that's what Jesus is to me. Come on. He is my Savior, and He came to rescue me. Come on. He wants to be your Savior, and He wants to rescue you. Because that was the mandate and mission of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful that Jesus fulfilled His purpose, completed His mandate. Amen. By the grace of God. I want to say to you this morning that salvation is the deliverance, beloved, from sin, death, and its consequences. You see, sin leads to death, and death has consequences. But salvation is the deliverance of sin, death, and its consequences. You see, I'm not preaching turn and burn like some preachers preach. I'm preaching turn and live. Turn to Jesus and live. Turn to Jesus and accept Him as Lord and Savior. Turn to Jesus and accept this glorious salvation. Turn to Jesus and your name will be registered in heaven. You see, salvation is not about a bad man becoming good. Salvation is about a dead man becoming alive. You see, when people from my past meet me, they say, Hey, buddy, you were a bad guy, but now you're doing good work. You're a good guy. I said, listen, brother, hold on. I'm not just good. I'm beyond good. I'm good and I'm alive because salvation, come on, somebody. It's not about a dead man, about a good man becoming, a bad man becoming good, but about a dead man becoming alive. So once I was dead spiritually, but now I'm alive. And why am I alive? Because Jesus is alive hallelujah and jesus still saves jesus still heals and jesus still delivers if there's anyone here that witnesses with me this morning shout hallelujah come on somebody give a hand clap to jesus uh, in this place and online because jesus christ uh, is about to save someone jesus christ is about to answer the prayer of a praying mother the same way he answered my mother's prayer after 20 years amen First, Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says this. I love this. For the Son of Man, in the NIV, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, beloved. And believe you me, I was not just lost. I was very lost. But when I said yes to Jesus, come on. Jesus touched my life. Jesus saved me by grace through faith. Jesus redeemed me, justified me. Jesus made me brand new. Hallelujah. Come on. Jesus made me brand new. New, because the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Someone say amen. And First John chapter 5, verse 12, there's a powerful portion in the Passion Translation says, Whoever has the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son does not possess eternal life. Whoever has the Son, speaking about Jesus, has eternal life. And whoever does not have the Son does not possess eternal life. So listen, for 35 years of my life, I did not possess this beautiful life Jesus is talking about, eternal life. I did not have it because I did not have Jesus. But on the 8th of July, 2007, when Pastor Ray made that altar call and I surrendered my life to Jesus, come on somebody, hallelujah, I moved into a dimension and position of possession, come on. Come on, I received this glorious salvation. Come on. And so today, I possess salvation. Come on, hallelujah. And because I possess salvation, my name is registered in heaven. Hallelujah. And as I said earlier on, my desire this morning as a minister of the gospel of Christ is that everyone present here at Rayma South Coast and connected via online that does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior will receive him. Come on. My desire this morning is that you will accept Jesus and that Jesus will take hold of your hand and walk out from this church with you and wherever you are. Come on. Come on. And be the savior of your life. My brother, my sister, young boy, young girl, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. This that I'm ministering this morning is the most important decision that anyone can make in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is to say yes to Jesus. Yes, to Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Come on. Angels bow before him and all heaven and earth adores him. And I conclude this, this uh, morning with Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and verse 13 in the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 13 in the Passion Translation. Amen. Listen to what Paul says, the great apostle Paul. And what is God's living message? It is the revelation of faith for salvation, which is the message that we preach. For if you publicly declare 
with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will experience salvation. It goes further and says, the heart that believes in him receives the gift of the righteousness of God and then the mouth confesses, resulting in salvation. And it is true. Everyone who calls on the Lord's name will experience new life. Hallelujah. Come on. He'll make you brand new. And my desire this morning is that you will experience new life. Maybe some of you might be thinking, saying, but we are saved. This is a reminder about the importance of salvation. This is a reminder what Jesus done at the cross. This is a reminder that there's no greater miracle but the miracle of salvation. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give a hand clap to Jesus. If you received something this morning, shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, come on, come on. Give a hand clap to Jesus this morning. My younger brother, and then I'm praying, was bound to drugs for 12 years. He was insane because of crystal meth. He was walking around speaking to himself. He was going crazy. And my mother said, let's book him into a mad hospital, a mental institution. I said to my mama, mother, mom, don't do that. Do you forget what Jesus done for me? I said, mom, what he needs is not a mental institution. What he needs is an encounter with Jesus. And guess what the Lord done for my, bro my brother? That was insane, going mad because of crystal meth. The Lord saved him. The Lord delivered him. Come on, somebody. The Lord gave him back a sound mind. Come on, a good health. Restored him with a job. Come on, come on. Supernaturally delivered him. And today my brother is saved by grace through faith. And he is now the one going into homes and, and rescuing people from this addiction, from addictions and from the snare uh, of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that when you are saved, your household will be saved too. Come on, give a hand clap to Jesus. Hallelujah. So our family know what it is to be lost, but we also know what it is to be found. Jesus saves and so not only my name has been arranged in heaven, my mother's name, my brother's names, their family's names, come on. And God is not done. Not with my family, not with your family, come on. Not with your community and not with South Africa. Someone shout, registered in heaven. Hallelujah. And wherever you are this morning, you might be visiting at Rayma South Coast for the first time or maybe you've been attending for a time but you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're connected via online. I want you, wherever you are, beloved, live or online, to bow your, close your eyes and bow your head. This is the most important part of the service. And if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you this morning not to listen to your mind, but listen to your heart. And you say, Brother Thurston, I want my name registered in heaven. I want to celebrate two birthdays, and I want to spend eternity with Jesus. If that is you this morning, wherever you are, wherever you are, just raise your hands, raise your hands, even at your home. Wherever you are, you're going to just stand where you're at. Just raise your hands. If you say, Brother Thurston, that's me. That's me this morning. God has spoken to my heart. I want my name registered in heaven. I want my family to be saved. Well, I want to say to you, it starts with you. It starts with you. And it starts with you. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. And whoever has raised your hands, just where you are, stand. And remain standing wherever you are. Just stand wherever you are. Those who have, have, have raised their hands all around this place and uh, also via online. Just stand where you are. Maybe in your kitchen, in your lounge, wherever you find yourself, in your bedroom. Just stand where you are and repeat this prayer after me. I guarantee your life will never be the same again. Amen. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died, that you were buried, and that you rose on the third day. I now receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I want to say a hearty congratulations to everyone who has accepted Jesus, Lord and Savior. And maybe you're connected online. Please, please, please visit Rayma South Coast website. Get the details there and please make contact with us. We would love to follow up with you and get to know you because now the discipling starts, which is very vital and important. I just want to 
pray a corporate prayer over people present and people online. Uh, maybe trusting God for healing, deliverance, a job, whatever it is, I'm going to pray a short corporate prayer. And we're just going to trust God together for supernatural breakthrough, healing, and deliverance for you and your families. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for healing anointing to flow from the crown of those individuals' heads to the soles of their feet. Those are trusting you for healing, healing in their physical bodies, healing in their minds, healing in their hearts. I pray for healing anointing to touch them, my God. And I declare that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, they are healed. I declare that they are well, they are strong, and they are going to live long in Jesus' name. I pray for those addicted to substances. I pray, Lord, that you will supernaturally deliver them. Set them free indeed. Break the chains, my God. Open up the prison doors. I pray that you will liberate them and set them free indeed in Jesus' name. I pray for those, Father, that are trusting you for jobs and breakthrough in their businesses. I pray for supernatural breakthrough in the corporate, in the workplace, and for their businesses in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also pray for those family members that are trusting you for, for their salvation. I pray that they will not only be saved, but them and their households to be touched by you, God, and saved by grace through faith in the mighty name of jesus i pray lord continue to protect them protect us as the body of christ in jesus mighty name amen and amen well beloved remember that jesus is lord and jesus loves you see you on thursday evening at 6 30 p.m online for our bible study god bless you bye bye now